Hey everybody, John the Other here, obviously. They may not be guilty of sexual assault, but those three police officers are still guilty of being scumbags who don't deserve to wear the uniform of Toronto police. This is from Toronto Sun's Michelle Mandel. She's talking about three men acquitted of false accusations of sexual assault and now under renewed attack from journalists. The print edition of the paper put a version of this article on the front page with the headline, Scumbags. This is not journalism. This is high drama shitposting, distinct from what you can find in a YouTube comment thread, only because it's on the front page of the Toronto Sun. There is something deeply ugly in the state of modern journalism. According to the written judgment by Justice Anne Molloy, the woman who accused these three cops spent her night positioning herself to have sex with Samir Kara. Kara is a man so unaccustomed to tequila shots that he ended his night at 10 p.m. vomiting and needing help from a colleague to return to his hotel room where he promptly passed out. And that these three colleagues spent a night out drinking is all we need to destroy them, vilify them, humiliate them, and run them out of their careers. They went out drinking. They took part in a consensual sexual encounter. We should demand they are hung from the boom of a construction crane, obviously, because cops shall not be allowed to be human beings. In Molloy's 45-page judgment, the accuser's version of events was contradicted by video evidence in every detail that comparison could be made. She sent numerous text messages throughout the evening, and in every one of these, she lied. She lied to her friends about having a boyfriend named Marcus. When the fact that Marcus does not exist was pointed out during the trial, she lied again, claiming Marcus was her name for another witness. The man whose name is not Marcus observed, nobody calls me Marcus, and he also pointed out that he's not dating her. The accuser also claimed to have been drugged. A medical expert showed during the trial that this was also false. In fact, it was impossible. No single statement made by the accuser was true. She had a remarkable 100% rate of falsehood. But a woman who lied in every claim that she made and defrauded the police and defrauded the court to destroy the lives of three of her colleagues, she is blameless. And those three who actually did nothing illegal, they must be destroyed. That is the apparent consensus from Toronto journalists, and to call this vicious and ugly is not adequate. The judge's decision is public. Every journalist calling for these men to be banished from society has read this judgment, and yet none of them have apparently read it. Judge Malloy took extensive care to make it clear that the testimony of accused cop Leslie Nisnik matched what could be checked against available video footage. That means he was telling the truth, and I've included such an insultingly obvious explanation that he was telling the truth because the Toronto Star's Rosie DeMano opens her attack on these falsely accused men with the word liars. Liars, full stop. Sots, full stop. Creeps, full stop. New paragraph. This is not journalism. But it does appear to be what journalists regard as moral and correct because they are all piling on. A not guilty verdict in a Canadian Superior Court counts for nothing. An accuser shown to have lied in every statement she made counts for nothing. That they have been brutalized does not matter. One of these men, Samir Kara, was sexually assaulted while he was unconscious. That does not matter. They drank alcohol and they had sex, so it's okay to destroy them. They will not be afforded the consideration we would give a human being. The Toronto Sun's Jerry Agar is the latest to join the attack. The articles all make demands of Toronto's chief of police and Toronto's mayor. These three cops must all go. They must all be fired and shamed and scorned. The accuser, the liar, she is referred to as A B in court documents which point out that those are not her real initials. But she is blameless. Despite the fact that she did everything that these three men did. She accepted free drinks like them. She engaged in group sex like them. In fact, with them. And she did things that they did not. 
For example, unlike them, she lied about it to the police and to a judge. And also unlike her colleagues, she committed sexual assault against an unconscious man. But in the media version of this story, she's not a sought, a liar, or a creep. And there is no chorus of journalists howling to have her banned from future employment. This is now, apparently, the ethic among journalists. Nobody is writing or publishing even anything to oppose this campaign of scorn being heaped on three men who've already been brutalized. The truth is the enemy. The populist lie is what keeps your colleagues praising you. It keeps you employed. It keeps you from being outcast among your fellow journalists. And these journalists are the ones we rely on to keep us informed so that we know what's going on. And the expression fake news is now so overused that it lacks any real sting. But if a journalist with a paying job actually exposed anything truthful or contradicted the agreed on lie, that writer's colleagues would almost certainly blacklist them out of the news reporting profession. Indulging yourself in objectivity or telling the truth is career suicide for any writer who still has a job. Rosie DeMano or Michelle Mandel or maybe Jerry Agar will probably win an award for excellence. Thanks very much for listening. And as always, have a lovely, lovely day.